Hello everybody, welcome back to Book of Kings, where we discuss topics such as history, religion, philosophy, psychology, culture, and more, and the way that they all interact with one another. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video. Hope you enjoy. The people known as the Uyghurs are a Turkic-speaking Sunni Muslim people from the Xinjiang region of modern-day China, primarily concentrated in the Tarim Basin in the south of the region. Their name has come into public discourse in recent years due to the repression they have faced at the hands of the government of the People's Republic of China. However, their history in the region is one which has seen the inflows and outflows of various world powers, bringing with them diverse influences, shaping the culture of the people known today as the Uyghurs. This will be the story of their history. The origins of the Uyghurs can be traced primarily to two distinct backgrounds which would later converge together. Let us begin with the older branch of the two which would occupy the region, the Indo-European peoples of the Tarim Basin, namely the Tokarians and Saka. While the language of the earlier inhabitants of the Tarim Basin is unknown, the earliest documented languages of the region are generally understood to have been Indo-European in origin, with many of the earliest inhabitants of the Tarim Basin being Caucasoid in physical appearance, as evidenced by the mummified remains of people found within the region. The Tokarians were one of the earliest documented inhabitants of the Tarim Basin, with the Tokarian languages commonly believed to be one of the first language branches to split from the Proto-Indo-European language of the Yamnaya culture where the Indo-European language family is believed to have originated. The Saka, also Indo-European speakers, were a branch of the Scythians who spoke an East Iranian language from the Indo-Iranian branch of languages. The Saka are generally believed to have arrived in the region after the Tokarians, following being expelled from their homelands in the Ili Valley by the Uwege in the 2nd century BC. The Tokarians were primarily concentrated within the Tarim Basin kingdoms of Kucha, Karashah, Jushi, and Lolan. While the Saka were primarily concentrated within the kingdoms of Hotan and Shule, based in the city of Kashgar. The Tarim Basin would periodically come under Chinese rule, initially under the Chinese Han Dynasty, who in the late 1st century AD would wrestle control of the region from the Xiongnu, who had challenged them for dominance of the basin. Through contact with the Kushan Empire and migrants from its Gandhara region of modern-day Pakistan in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, the inhabitants of the Tarim Basin would come to embrace Mahayana Buddhism, as well as the use of the Indian Prakrit language for administrative purposes. The Tarim Basin would once again come under Chinese rule under the Tang Dynasty, who would gain dominance over the region in the 7th century AD following the defeat of the Gokturk Khanate, which had made the local kingdoms into vassal states. Tang dominance of the basin would later be challenged by the Tibetan Empire, with rule shifting back and forth between the two powers. Now on to the people who would form the other branch, which the people now known as the Uyghurs would derive from. The rise of the Gokturk Khanate, or simply the Turkic Khanate, founded by the Turkic Ashina clan, would witness the dominance of Turkic peoples over the Eurasian steppe region. At the time of the impending collapse of the Gokturk Khanate, we would witness a power struggle between three Turkic tribes, competing for dominance of the remains of this once great empire. Those tribes would be the Karluks, the Basmils, and the Uyghurs. So naturally, with there being an odd number of tribes in this conflict, two would ultimately unite against the odd man out. That odd man out would be the Basmils, who would face an alliance of the Karluks and Uyghurs. The Uyghurs and Karluks would defeat the Basmils, who would from that point disappear from the face of history. With their common enemy, the Basmils defeated, the Karluks and Uyghurs would inevitably come into conflict with one another. The Uyghurs would ultimately defeat the Karluks and force them to flee westward. The Uyghurs would establish a powerful empire, the Uyghur Khanate, which would be the predominant steppe Khanate of its time, dominating the Eastern Eurasian steppe. The Uyghur Khanate would eventually come to adopt Manichaeism through contact with the Sogdians of Central Asia. 
The Khanate would eventually meet its demise in the 9th century as a result of raids at the hands of another Turkic people, the Yenisei Kyrgyz, originating from Siberia. The Uyghur Khanate would be destroyed and the Uyghur people would flee the Mongolian steppe and migrate into the Tarim Basin, where they would found the Quocho Kingdom and occupy much of the region, intermarry with the local Tokarians, bringing with them their Turkic Uyghur language, while accepting the Buddhist faith of the Tokarians. The Saka people of Hotan and Kashgar had remained unconquered by Turkic peoples up until this point. That is until the rise of a new conquering force, the Karakhanid Khanate, which had been set up in Central Asia when the Karluks, formerly expelled from Mongolia by the Uyghurs, would convert to Islam, becoming the first Turkic people in history to do so. First conquering Kashgar, the Karakhanids would use the city as a launch pad to initiate their conquest of the Kingdom of Hotan, resulting in the conversion of first Kashgar and then Hotan to Islam, in addition to the Turkification of both territories. The Karakhanids would frequently come into conflict with Quocho in the eastern Tarim Basin. Upon the rise of the Mongol Empire, the Tarim Basin would be largely spared from the death and destruction which had characterized much of the Mongol conquests, with the kingdom of Quocho in the east and the Karakhanids in the west of the region accepting Mongol rule with minimal to no resistance. Following the Mongol conquests, the Mongol Empire would break up into four different Khanates, one of those being the Chagatai Khanate in Central Asia. The Chagatai Khanate spoke a language from the Karluk branch of the Turkic language family, being derived from the language of the previously mentioned Karluks, and would embrace the religion of the natives of Central Asia whom the Mongols had conquered, that religion being Islam. This Khanate would eventually fracture politically with its easternmost polity known as Mogolistan. It was from this nation that the Tarim Basin, specifically the Kingdom of Quocho, would face a new threat. Mogolistan would conquer the Tarim Basin, including the Kingdom of Quocho, which had up until that point resisted coming under Muslim rule, remaining Buddhist, forced the kingdom to accept Islam, and spread the usage of the Chagatai language from the Karluk branch of the Turkic language family to the territory of the former Kingdom of Quocho. After the conversion of the Uyghurs to Islam, the name Uyghur fell out of use until the 20th century, presumably being associated with the Uyghurs' pre-Islamic Buddhist history. It was at this point that the people of the Tarim Basin would possess all of the characteristics that the current Uyghur people of the region possess, being of mixed Indo-European and Turkic background, speaking a Turkic language of the Karluk branch and practicing the religion of Islam. The eastern portion of Mogolistan, primarily corresponding to the Tarim Basin, would break away from the polity, forming the Yarkent Khanate. The Yarkent Khanate would rule the Tarim Basin from the early 1500s until the early 1700s, when they were conquered by the Zungar people, a branch of the western Oirat Mongols from the region of Zungaria, just north of the Tarim Basin, who practiced Tibetan Buddhism and had established the Zungar Khanate. The shifting political domination which had characterized the history of the Tarim Basin would continue with the region being conquered by the ethnic Manchu-dominated Qing dynasty of China. The Dzungar Khanate would come into conflict with the Qing dynasty, resulting in the demise of the Khanate, its conquest by the Qing dynasty, the mass killing of the Dzungar people and depopulation of the region, followed by the repopulation of the region of Dzungaria by the Qing dynasty with other ethnic groups from the empire such as Han Chinese, Kazakhs, Chinese Hui Muslims, and the peoples of the Tarim Basin, now known as the Uyghurs. The combination of Dzungaria and the Tarim Basin, which had previously been separate political units, would be grouped together into the region now known as Xinjiang in 1884 under Qing rule. The Qing dynasty would define all of the regions within the empire as China, including regions which were not populated primarily by ethnic Han Chinese, such as the Tarim Basin, staking Chinese claim to the region. From this point on, the Tarim Basin would remain under Chinese rule up until the present day. The Qing Dynasty would be overthrown in 1912, being replaced by the Republic of China. This now brings us to the modern history of the Uyghurs, particularly the name Uyghur. For centuries, the people of the Tarim Basin possessed no national name, generally identifying themselves with the basin oasis which they lived in, such as people from Kashgar referring to themselves as Kashgari, or referring to themselves by the more general names of Turkey, translating as Turkic, 
East Turkestani, or simply as Musulman, which translates as Muslim. This would change in 1921. At a conference in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, then a part of the Soviet Union, the Turkic Muslims of the Tarim Basin would settle on the term Uyghur as the name for their people, naming themselves after their ancestors from the Uyghur Khanate who had migrated into the Tarim Basin and intermarried with the native Tokharians. They would note, however, that the modern-day Uyghurs should not be confused with the medieval Uyghur Khanate, likely referencing the differences in language, with modern-day Uyghurs speaking a Karluk Turkic language as opposed to a language descended from the old Uyghur Turkic language, as well as their mixed heritage, also possessing ancestry from the pre-Turkic Indo-European peoples of the region. After a failed attempt at establishing the first modern Uyghur state, the Turkic Islamic Republic of East Turkestan, known as the First East Turkestan Republic for short, this term would be adopted by governor and warlord of the Xinjiang region, Sheng Shikai, who maintained strong ties with the Soviet Union. The usage of the name Uyghur was rejected by East Turkestani intellectuals who criticized the categorization of Turkic Muslims into different ethnicities as creating disunity among the Turkic Muslim peoples, preferring the term Turkey. It has been hypothesized that this name designation was promoted by the Soviets and their puppet Shikai to cultivate Uyghur nationalism as a way of dividing the Uyghurs of Xinjiang from the other Turkic peoples of Soviet Central Asia. Following the establishment of the Soviet-backed Second East Turkestan Republic and subsequent absorption into the People's Republic of China following the communist victory in the Chinese Civil War, the usage of this term would continue under Chinese Communist Party rule, led by Mao Zedong, remaining until the present day. While the Uyghurs would remain a part of the People's Republic of China to this day, nationalist and separatist ambitions would continue, largely supported by the Soviet Union and fueled by Soviet propaganda during the era of the Sino-Soviet split. These separatist ambitions would continue into the post-Cold War era resulting in various attacks carried out by Uyghur separatists, reaching their peak in 2014, leading to a heavy-handed crackdown by the Chinese government, with the placement of much of the Uyghur population into internment camps, referred to by the Chinese government as re-education camps, something which has received significant condemnation from much of the international community. This brings us to the present day and the end of our story on the history of the Uyghur people, a people with a unique history shaped by influences from the shifting array of regional powers which made their way through the Tarim Basin. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you next time. Thank you for watching. This has been another Book of Kings video. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time I release a new video. And if you enjoy Book of Kings content and would like to support the channel, feel free to donate to the Book of Kings Patreon account. Link is provided in the description.